What is going on everybody? This is Bronco Juggalo and today is a special Halloween edition of a Wild Eye film. So we are doing just for the hell of it. A little grilling with Bronco Juggalo. Now this is just for the intro because I actually haven't watched the movie yet. I gotta watch it later tonight. I'm gonna do the review but I thought I would throw this on here because I know people enjoy it. Tonight I'm cooking up a personal favorite of mine. We got beer brats and then we got hot dogs. Because honestly, the kids don't really eat a lot of the brats, and then they end up throwing them away. So it's kind of wasteful, and they like the hot dogs better. So kids get hot dogs, dad gets beer brats. Guys, I hope you enjoy this review of Jack vs. Lanterns, because I know I'm going to enjoy bringing it to you. This is Bronco Juggalo, saying peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've been wanting to do this one prior to Halloween, and right at Halloween forever. And I missed Wild Eye Wednesday this week. So I'm doing a special Wild Eye right before Halloween. This is Jack vs. Lanterns. Now this movie looks fucking fantastic. This cover looks fantastic. I have been waiting to see this movie and I was so hyped for it. I asked for this movie specifically. And Rob from Wild Eye sent it to me. Big thank you to Rob. But I have to say, guys, I, oh my god, this movie fucking sucked. Oh, damn, I'm so sorry. I really am. Jack vs. Lanterns is a 2017 film released by Wild Eye in 2021. It was directed by Jason Ligori, or Ligori, I'm not sure. Pumpkin-headed killers uh, are terrorizing a town, and it's up to Jack Wood to stop them. This time around, Jack enlists a team of sexy, hot, street-fighting bitches. Now, I believe this is a sequel to a movie that I haven't seen, and they advertise a third film called Jack and Jill vs. The Hill. Guys, going into this movie, I was stoked. I've heard yes, and I've heard no about it. I've heard good, and I've heard bad. I'm going to go with my pros because I have less of those. Basically, my pros are the Pumpkin King guy or the the first Pumpkin Killer we get looks badass. As do two of the followers. The rest of them all look very bad, very cheap. Uh, now, them being cheap is not such a bad thing in a low-budget film, but they had these three really good-looking ones and one that looked spectacular. It looked exactly... like this. It looked just like this. See on the back? It looks badass. And I wish they would have just went with this guy and used him like a slasher killer. They could have had a good you know, hour and 20 minute slasher film. It would have been fucking bomb. You know, and I think that would have been great. That's what I was hoping this movie was, was. That's what I thought it was all about. There is a really cool salute to Troma verbally in the movie. The sheriff refers to Tromaville, and I think that was pretty cool. The first 10 minutes of this film are really good. I enjoyed the first 10 minutes. I also enjoyed the last 10 minutes. The last 10 minutes were pretty funny. I hated all of the CGI in this movie. From the CGI special effects to CGI environments that they did not need for like laboratory scenes and things like that, they didn't need them. Uh, in this film. They had plenty of sets. They had plenty of places to film that they could have made a convincing looking laboratory without the CGI. The secondary story of a woman trying to take over her husband's company and she clones him to get him to sign over the papers even though she's already killed him a couple times. That story was completely unnecessary. The as I said, the first 10 minutes of this film were really good. And then it was bore snore for like an hour and 20 minutes. 25 minutes. It was just so dull and boring and just like blah. And then the last 10 minutes or so of the film, it picked back up again and I was enjoying that part. Now I know this is a low budget film, but there is some places where they are using, like, people walking around in, you know, uh, 
full body suits, like uh, work coverall suits. And then they have pumpkins on their head and they chop into the pumpkins and it kills them. And that's pretty cool, you know, they do it with some dummies and things like that. But there's one scene in particular where there's supposed to be a pumpkin creature coming out of a tree. And it is literally just a pumpkin sitting in the tree with a, what looks like a coverall suit made out of clear trash bags for the body. And you can literally see the trash inside. Why couldn't they have just put a person there, you know, and then right when they were chopping into the head, just move him and do a close-up shot of the head? You know, I just thought that was absolutely just the worst fucking planning. So bad. I mean, you know, there's a lot of leeway we give to small independent filmmakers and a lot of leeway we give to um, low-budget stuff, but come on, bad idea is a bad idea, and that was a bad idea. Guys, I wish that uh, this movie was a little better for you. I'm going to end this video with some jack lanterns that me and my kids carved and my wife. Um, hope you like them. And I hope you enjoyed the intro. Guys, I was really hoping for a better movie, but we didn't get it. But that's okay. This has been a really good Halloween season. We got a brand new Halloween Kills film, which is fucking amazing. Um, I've had a lot of fun. It's been very, very busy. But it's been a good month altogether. It's even been a good month at work. Guys, this is Bronco Juggalo saying, peace out, have a great Halloween. And don't forget we have Wild Eye Week, November 14th to the 20th, and the trailer drops on Halloween. Check it out, it's really badass, awesome promo. More of a short film than a trailer, but hey. This is Bronco Juggalo again saying, and to end this special Halloween video, you get a look at the witch, the ghost, and the cat pumpkins. Yeah, I know I'm not the best carver, but they're awesome still. <laughs>